things. I'm Veronica from the Go Littleton Glad Shop coming to you live and here in downtown Littleton. I'm so excited to have a guest today on the Go Littleton Glad Show. I'm joined today with my friend Nasli Ermit from Ankara, Turkey. It's uh, so exciting to have you here today. Nasli and I met online and we connected from different countries with different languages, different cultures, and we connected over the Pollyanna story. Greetings, Nadley. Hi, hi, Veronica. Thank you for having me on this uh, video. How are you today? Very good. We're glad to have you here today me joining too. us. <laughs> yeah, been... me too. Thank you. Oh, great. It's been so much fun getting to know you. And Nasli is the author of her new book, Pollyanna Mutu Mudu, which translates. Great. In, <laughs> great. I'm learning some turkey, and it translates to Was Pollyanna Happy? So we're here today to discuss about her Pollyanna story and her book. So tell us a little bit about yourself and why you wrote the book. Okay, thank you very much again. Uh, and it's been a pleasure to uh, talk on your uh, recording. And my, my name is Nazla Ermut. I'm from Turkey, as you said. So uh, actually, I am an economist already. Afterwards, I have been working in HR uh, business for almost 25 years in corporate world. Since 10 years, I am running my own consultancy and coaching business. Uh, writing is my... Uh, childhood dream uh, and my hobby until I start with my own job and now uh, I'm writing professionally and writing a book is again my childhood dream. I've been working on uh, positive psychology since 2015, the science of happiness uh, and I was thinking what kind of book should I write? Uh, I was thinking about writing stories, writing a novel, uh, writing a professional book, but one day, somehow, it came to my mind, the Pollyanna. Uh, while I was working on a positive psychology, uh, she appeared in my mind because I have read Pollyanna maybe 10 times when I was a kid. Uh, I was almost at the same age as Pollyanna when I was reading the book. And I was so sorry for her because she had lots of, lots of, terrible things happening to her, but she's still continuing with life. And I had difficulty in understanding Pollyanna in my childhood times. Uh, that day in my office, when I was thinking, she appeared in my mind as with the picture uh, up front the book. And uh, I started to think, oh, why, why this little girl uh, is still uh, in the mouth of the people, adult world? Why they still laugh at her? Why some people say Pollyanna act? Oh, she's wearing uh, rose-colored glasses. She is only looking at the uh, full side of the glass and she ignores all the bad things happening in the world. I said, is it true? Maybe it is not because as far as I remember Pollyanna, it was very similar to uh, her attitude is very similar to positive psychology science. Then I decided maybe I should read Pollyanna again at this age and then start to see if she was really happy. And maybe I can write my book about, uh, not about, but on the footsteps of Pollyanna, uh, integrating the positive psychology uh, clues, integrating my own life experiences, and at the end decide if she was happy. So how this book Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. That's an amazing story that you went back to the Pollyanna story. I hear a lot of adults tend to reread it again and discover new aspects of it and really find it still a very thoughtful story. So tell us, what did you discover while you were writing this book? Uh, I discovered lots of things, actually. Maybe I can share a couple of them now. Uh, for example, I noticed that some people are accepting being happy uh, and they don't question it. They they look at the uh, things happening uh, 
positively in their lives. They are aware of what is going on in the bad side, but they can move on like Pollyanna did. But there are other people. I, I made them in four categories in my book. Uh, they have some judgments, some uh, expectation or some kind of thoughts about happiness. Some of them, uh, some of them uh, expect happiness to be something uninterrupted. They want to be happy. They expect to be happy without any interruptions. And, and if there is one single interruption in their happiness, they say it's not possible to be happy in this world. Some people uh, have a conditional happiness uh, judgment. By this, I mean, if something happens, I will be happy. If I get retired, I will be happy. If I go to the holiday, I will be happy. So they uh, tend to throw happiness into the future. So it's not possible to be happy now. So you lose somehow being happy. Uh, there are there are some people uh, with impossible happiness judgment. They say in this world, with this climate problems, with these big fires happening all around the world, with this terrorism, it's not possible to be happy in this world. It's never going to be possible from now on. And the fourth category is uh, people say good old days. I was happy when I was young. I was happy when I was married. I was happy when then, then, then. So it's always on the back side of the life and you cannot find it now. So I, I noticed there are four categories of people with uh, problem with happiness. What has I uh, find out uh, when I'm writing this book? I, I noticed this is a good, uh, finding for myself as well. Uh, I noticed that happiness and unhappiness can walk together. Uh, with this, what I mean, I mean, sometimes we think in order to be happy, we shouldn't be unhappy. But uh, I think uh, they can walk side by side and they can hold the hands of each other then it will be easier to move through the unhappy days, the sad days, the angry days, the, the bad days. When we find something good in those days, and I'm sure there are, it's not big things, but there are things uh, going positively, then it will be much easier uh, to handle the hard days, the hard times, the unhappy days. This is another thing uh, I noticed. And uh, let me say one more and I will stop. Uh, for the, at the beginning, I said uh, people accuse Pollyanna as just looking at the positive side of everything. So it's looking only the full part of the cup. But I don't think she is doing that. She is seeing the full cup. Half is empty, half is full. She is looking at realistically. She knows that there is some water in it and there is not in the other half, but she tries to find what she can do with the uh, full part. And maybe she can find another water source to, full, to make it uh, full of water, the glass, the half empty glass. So it's kind of realistic optimism, uh, which positive psychology all, also says about that. Uh, this is my other finding about happiness. I have lots of, but I will stop now. <laughs> oh, well, those are wonderful points. I could, I, I find them interesting, especially when you said a uh, realistic optimism. And I think that that's really sort of is the key that I try and, and tell people when they do sort of put Pollyanna in the rose colored glasses or that we're not paying attention is that she really did have and Eleanor too, the author of the book, Eleanor Porter, who was born right here in Littleton, she had a rough, uh, very tough childhood, some health disease, uh, it was not easy in our town at the time, a small New England town with rough winters. And she always, again, was an optimistic person and lived with these hardships, but tried to really just be in the moment and find something to be glad about at that time. So I think what you discovered is right what Eleanor had felt back in the early 1900s. So it's fabulous. 
And just one more thing about Eleanor Porter. Uh, I admire her on this respect because I, I think if I'm not wrong, the book was written at the beginning of 1900s. Mm -hmm. It was the worst time of the world, maybe. Big wars, big diseases. It's very terrible time. And I think she had a mission to teach children a good way of looking at life. This is a great mission, and I don't understand why people say rose-colored glasses, ha ha ha, silly optimism. It's not. It's nonsense. There is something good in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, how, what do you have? Some tips for people who do struggle with trying to find happiness, or kind of feel like it is something out there that they can't quite grasp. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can give a couple of them, again, not taking too much time. Uh, first, first one is we need to catch the good moments in our life because we, we tend to miss them. Uh, our brain is wired to see the negatives first. So we need to teach our brain to find the positives going uh, around. Uh, for this, we can make two different exercises. The first one is uh, finding out the experience we had, the positive experience, and we can journal about it. We can write what we lived, what are the good moments in it, when we lived it, what did we feel, kind of journaling activity. And the other one is a daily activity. It's, it's uh, confirmed by science as well. They did an experiment on this on several people, and they see it worked. I have references in my book about this experiment. Uh, this is just writing three things every day, three positive things at the end of the day in a notebook. But every day, the point is here, uh, every day those three things should be different than the day before. Oh, that's a great tip. Yes. Yeah, yeah maybe uh, this is uh, one of them. These two are one of them. And the other one is, uh, social relations. It's quite important for uh, having happiness and well-being in our lives, keeping good social relations with other people, helping them. Uh, this is what Poliana does in uh, her story a lot. Uh, and there is, a, again, another experiment done by Harvard University. Maybe you heard about it, that very long experiment. It's like... Mm, I, I forgot it, I wrote it, he wrote it in here. It's 85 years study, 85, for 85 years, they tracked more than 700 people. They started to work with them when they are young and that they continued for 85 years. Lots of people changed who are conducting the experiment during those 85 years. And uh, they noticed that the ones who live long and who live healthy are the ones uh, who have good social relations. Yeah. So we have to keep them. We, ha we shouldn't forget them because pandemic uh, period uh, unfortunately uh, decreased the amount of social connections. We have to keep them uh, alive, I think. Uh, and what else I can say? And oh, I can tell from the book, uh, the uh, my good old uh, happiness formula. Mm -hmm. uh, if one is not there, the other one is there for sure. I will tell three things which make us happy. So we can find uh, any time at least one of them. The first one is uh, past memories that made us happy. The second one, the things that is always in our lives, but sometimes we don't see them. They're always with us. For example, you live in a seaside, you open the window, you see the sea for the first 10 days. You always see, oh, this is sea, sea smell. Oh, this is great. Maybe after a year, you forget to look at the sea. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's always with us. We should look at it. And the third one is there's always something new happening in our life that, make, that can make us happy. So we have to find and see those uh, newcomers. But in order to do all of these, we have to have our own happiness definition. Otherwise, it's not easy to find what we are looking for. Uh, we have to maybe write down our uh, happiness definition and uh, keep it somewhere visible for us. Uh, one more thing I remembered, Veronica, 
that's the happiness jars. Oh yes. And you have it in your glass shop, <laughs> I know. Uh, that's another good thing to share, especially in schools, in families, uh, to uh, make our happiness more and more. It's a small jar, uh, any size, and uh, you can write the happy moments uh, in small papers. Anybody can write and drop into the jar and you can make a, a social event, opening the jar and reading what uh, the happy moments all together, have fun. So that's another tip. Uh, oh. to conclude i'm stopping <laughs> no that i just wanted to on the happiness jar i wasn't aware of that technique and we had talked about it in one of our visits and i got so excited that i thought it would be a nice gift to have here in the glad shop so i found little jars and got a little jar of positivity happiness jars with little pieces of paper that you can uh, write something happy on and fill your jar. And I have to say that it's been well received and we're we're looking forward to sharing happiness jars all over the world through here. So Great. I, I'm so glad Great. you reminded me of that, uh, that little technique just to help us every day because you it isn't easy to, to stay happy. It doesn't come naturally for any of us really, but these techniques of looking for something to be grateful for and remembering to enjoy our, our environment or even just little uh, games of writing down something each morning with your family or friends. Um, it, it def little steps like that do all of a sudden create a little more happiness in your life. Yeah, right? yeah. So I and I also wanted to point out and when you were reading in Pollyanna and um, in the, the books you were reading, they call they say it's happiness like we always say it was gladness Glad. in America, which um, but you were saying that it is in the in the books you were reading, it is called she was happy or happy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And also we shouldn't forget about, as you said, glad I remembered that reminded me the glad game. Mm -hmm. That is that is the basic tip for, from Pollyanna to all of us. Uh, to find gladness in our lives she yeah. she is great at that game and she is great at teaching that game to the others so yeah. spreading her positivity to the other people so that's another great point it is yeah to just find one thing to be glad about or happy about each day it is easy you can tell people i tell people in the shop all the time i'm always explaining the glad game uh and i i am a player every day. I try to find Great. something to be glad about. <laughs> so. Oh, those are wonderful tips for all of us. And what did you uh, officially discover when you were writing your book? And the question is, is was Pollyanna happy? Did you? Uh... <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I didn't write it until the last chapter. And last chapter of the book is uh, belonging to Pollyanna. First, Pollyanna and the science, and the, the uh, very last chapter co is called Pollyanna, what did you do? <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, according to me, uh, in those hard days, she is uh, successfully uh, being happy because it is really a success story, I think. She lost her mom, her dad. She's living with a very angry and sad aunt. But within all of those circumstances, she's always finding something. She's changing her physical space to feel happy. Uh, she's going to people, giving her love, uh, explaining about the glad game. She's finding everything that can make her happy or glad. Uh, so she but she was happy, I'm sure, and she had a very good uh, point of view for the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, kids should continue to be taught about that as parents. Uh, if some of the people uh, watching this video are parents, they should try to teach those tips to their children, even if they cannot read or write. For example, every night going to bed, they can ask, what are the three things that are good for you? As they come back from school, what happened in school today? Three good things, please tell me. Uh, so it is, if we learn it, if we train our brain uh, for that kind of uh, looking at life, it will be much easier. 
But I want to say one more sentence about this. Uh, for This is for people who say, am I have to be happy? It is not something obligatory. It is the choice of the people. You can be or you cannot be. But uh, the, the only thing we should keep in mind that uh, this kind of happiness, This is, I am talking about the happiness which is within us, uh, not happiness purchased. Uh, the happiness within us is important for all of us, but it depends on the person. They can choose to be happy or choose to be uh, unhappy. So this is my uh, point about in, within the book. This is the point as well. I think that is a key point, too, that we do tend to, like you earlier said, say, well, I'll be happy when I'm on vacation or I'm going to be happy when I have so much money in the account or versus I think that's what Pollyanna forces us in her glad game is to take a look at this moment. What are you glad about right now? Not when you're on vacation or yesterday or but uh, kind of keeping it present at the moment and sort of just going with what feeling you have. And even if it isn't a, a, a stressful or an anger or something that, like you said in the beginning, happiness can walk together with that. So. Yeah. Those are great. That is a great uh, points. And we're looking forward to learning more about your book. Are there any questions or anything that I forgot to ask about your book or your work or? Uh, I think not. Just one thing about uh, the the plan that we share, if I can successfully finalize it, we are planning to uh, translate the book into English and then self-publish and maybe it will be in your glad shop someday. Uh, that's yes. my uh, dream <laughs> now about the book, sharing with English readers. That would we'll be see. fabulous to have it here on sale. Um, but they can, <laughs> if anyone um, wants the Turkish edition, they can buy it on. Where can they buy it now if they want it? They can it? buy it online from Amazon. Okay. It is Great. already in sale in Amazon. Great. And yes, we're working together to get it translated. And then maybe we'll even have Nazi over to Littleton for a book signing event. Well, oh, is our, that's oh, our dream. great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's put it here and watch it someday. <laughs> that's right. And we'll broadcast it live to the Glad Club. Yes, so. yes. Well, I really enjoyed our time today and just find it fabulous and amazing that around the world, uh, the Pollyanna story does speak to each and every one of us. And you're sharing the gladness and the happiness through your work, the same way that I'm sort of sharing it through the, the funny glad shop and with visitors to Littleton. I think each and every one of us find our own way to, to connect to the Pollyanna story. So Yes, yes, Great. yes. And thank you, Veronica, for your responsiveness, because I just wrote an email to you uh, telling about my book, and then we got friends. And so thank you for your uh, kindness on this. Wonderful. It's been a it's been a bright spot and some tough a tough year. So yes, great. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, and we will see you uh, hopefully soon. And uh, and we'll share this with our Glad Cub and be glad. <laughs> Bye.